My name is Kelly Papel, Technical Manager for Vino Engineering, LLC. And today I want to talk about water hammer and steam and condensate systems. Uh, talk about the safety and reliability issues. And this is part two of a three-part series on water hammer. Types of water hammer that we have in steam and condensate systems. We can put this into five areas. Hydraulic shock, thermal shock, flow shock, differential shock, or flooded shock. So those are five major areas of water hammer. Hydraulic shock. A small percentage of water hammer will be hydraulic shock. You know, pumps on and off. Liquid valves turn on too fast. Not a prevalent cause of water hammer in the steam or in con well basically in the condensate system but it's there so we have to address it a little bit thermal shock um, is the major source of water hammer and the steam collapsing water is accelerated into a resulting vacuum in all directions with great speed in biphase condensate systems, steam bubbles may be introduced below the level of condensate in a condensate line or tank, resulting into water hammer. And a lot of times you hear ping, 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 and that is that bubble collapsing. So we've got condensate draining out of the process, going across a drain device which is steam trap. This is going to be a higher pressure going to a lower pressure here and the condensate can't exist. So a percentage of liquid changes form from a liquid to the vapor, flash steam. And the flash steam will be in bubbles. As the pressure decreases, the bubble will increase in size. Coming through a water level here in the condensate line, the water is, is a different thermal or cooler temperature and the bubble will collapse. <coughs> now, connection into the, the condensate header into the bottom or the side will result in 100% water hammer. So flash steam for the process will be in a bubble form, bubble collapses. We just talked about the thermal differences. The white bubble symbolizes the flash steam in the process. And this is showing make an entrance into the bottom of the header. Correction to resolve thermal shock water hammer is pretty simple. When you're coming off the process, always come into the top. And that is even a drip leg application. We want to make entrance into the top of the condensate header. Flash steam will dissipate on top of the liquid condensate without any water hammer. So the flash will come in and be dissipated on top of the, of the liquid or condensate level. And that will be resulting in no water hammer. Now, this is an example. We have water hammer coming off of a drain device, steam trap here, coming up and connected into the side of the condensate header, which will result in... <laughs> Now, the correction for this here is pretty simple. It would come off and come into the top of the header and the water hammer will go away. Basically, the flash is dissipated, like I said before, on top of the water level and thus no water hammer or collapsing of that uh, vapor will cause any problem. Uh, this is just so uh, another application where the water hammer is coming off and coming into a bottom of a condensate collection header here. 
and again resulting into water hammer. Again, the solution that will be coming off, repipe, and come into the top of the header, thus resolving the water hammer issue. Here's another one on thermal shock water hammer, and this cause a connection location is the top of the header, which we said before that this is really what we want is connected into the top. However, the incoming condensate line velocities were like 18,900 feet per minute, which was really doing is taking the flash steam and pushing it underneath the water level, and thus the bubble would collapse. Remember, we want condensate lines at 4,500 feet per minute, and this results into water. <laughs> Now, the solution basically was separating the flash from the condensate line. So upstream up here, we separated the flash off of here and then brought the liquid down into the line. So that way we got the velocities under 4,500 feet per minute. But the other thing is we recovered the flash downstream in a flash and recovered flood of flash steam. So it was a, a resolving a water hammer but also we were uh, recovering the flash steam or the energy there and making use of it. Now, I also talk about connection into the bottom of the header, which is showing here, connected into this line. And this is a very small steam trap and just to emphasize the amount of movement that you can have just from a... <laughs> see here is piped into the side. <laughs> pipes appear coming and piping into the top and the water hammer will go away. So the thing about thermal shock water hammer elimination, always pipe to the top of the condensate header and make sure that the velocities are at 4,500 feet per minute or lower making entrance. So it's very critical to make sure that uh, the uh, piping is sized correctly. And again, always come to the top of the condensate header. So. Visit our website, 70 Best Practices, 28 articles, and when there's 24 instructional videos up there. Any questions on, uh, on anything regarding steam and condensate, please contact us. You can get our contact information. Uh, these are just our engineering assessments, steam balancing, reliability studies, engineering training, and we also do project design, project management, full engineering support, and the contact information here. Have a great day.